Hey, it's Mazzy, and I want to talk to you about the CARS, the Rhino High Fidelity Audiophile, one of the first uh, of two releases along with uh, John Coltrane Sounds. I did not get the John Coltrane Sounds, but I did get the self-titled album because I no longer have an original, and I figured this would be a fun uh, record to listen to and just to, to dip my toes and to, to listen to see what they're doing over there. Now, um, I don't usually do uh, shootouts. I've done some um, infrequently. So I will put links below to other uh, channels that have done uh, shootouts. But I want to talk about this record historically from my personal journey in music. And, uh, and then I'm going to talk to you about a listening experience I decided uh, to partake uh, with this release. I graduated San Francisco State at the end of 1977. In the spring of 1978, I went to Europe for a four-month journey, my first trip to the UK and the continent. And when I moved out of my apartment in San Francisco, I moved all my records from San Francisco up to Mount Tamalpais into my girlfriend's little uh, rental uh, shack, love shack, uh, up on Mount Tam, above Mill Valley, Marin County, across uh, from the Golden Gate Gr Bridge, above Muir Woods in that fog belt. Uh, beautiful, beautiful area. Probably a place that was um, I didn't appreciate at the age of uh, 23. My girlfriend lived there. She was a disc jockey on KSAN Radio. She did the uh, Saturday and Sunday night uh, shift, 10 to 2 a.m. That's another story. I've covered it a little bit on some of my Memories of a Vinyl Junkie uh, uh, videos. So anyway, I go to Europe. First song I hear, my friend picks me up at Heathrow. On the radio, we turn it on, and this is April, I think, of 1978. I hear Kate Bush, Wuthering Heights. Never heard of her, never heard her music. I was bowled away. Next day, I bought that single on Oxford Street at HMV. So cut to the end of the summer of 1978. I move into this little blissful splendor of a love shack up on Mount Tamalpais. And I'm looking through uh, the new release records. Of course, she's a disc jockey, so she gets like massive promos. And I had, there, there'd been a hunger all summer since I was traveling around Europe. I really didn't uh, get to hear all the new releases I had been used to my entire life from buying records, from working in the record stores in college. And so there was a plethora of, of promo albums in the bin. And one I remember her telling me about that she was playing a lot was the self-titled Cars album, the first album that came out that summer in 1978. And then I started hearing it, of course, on the radio. I hadn't heard it uh, in Europe, but once I got home, I played play that record. And I, and I actually really liked the record. I saw them, uh, one of the early tours, I don't know if it was the first tour, but I saw them when they uh, came through San Francisco. So here we are in 2023. Rhino Records, the catalog division, the reissue division of Warner Group, used to be WIA, uh, is putting out this uh, series of what they call audiophile releases under the banner Rhino High Fidelity. First two is the self-titled Cards album, that 1978 debut, and Coltrane Sound. I'm not buying their uh, Coltrane Sound. I have a copy of it that I'm very satisfied with. And I only bought this because I no longer have my original promo copy from 1978. It went away in my 95 LP purge, an album I heard so much I decided I got the CD at that time. And so I decided this might be a nice time to check this uh, label out. Uh, and to listen to it, and listen to it with fresh ears, having not heard the album in my home for literally decades. So I ordered directly. Uh, it's a $40 record. You have to order only directly through the label. So I'm going to pop this baby open, put it on my turntable, and just listen to it as if it's a new record. I haven't heard this record on vinyl in at least 25 years. And I think it's going to be fun in that respect. I'm not doing a shootout. I'm not doing any comparison. It's the only copy of this record now on vinyl in my house. Uh, it is cut by Kevin Gray. Original master tapes, apparently all analog. Uh, limited number to 5,000 only uh, available directly from Rhino. This series is going to be about, at this point, two records every quarter. Uh, possibly a jazz record and a rock record. I think they really should go more in the rock area since uh, jazz seems to be covered 
quite a bit, although they have a vast jazz catalog. Maybe they'll ramp it up and it will be a monthly thing. I think $40 is a sweet spot for this type of record, this quality. Do I need a gatefold on a record that it's not a gatefold? Not really, but uh, you know, I understand they wanna make it premium with this OB strip and everything. In essential items that adds to the cost possibly, plus they're selling it direct and not retailing it, which is unfortunate. Uh, but it looks like a really nice package. I'll get into that on the other side of this video. So um, why don't we uh, check it out? Okay, two listens. I listened to it straight through twice. Took a little break in between. This is a fun record. I I almost had forgotten how uh, fun it is. Of course, over the years, I continually hear these songs. Uh, there's so many, you know, big hits on this record, and it really is a fun record. Now, uh, production-wise, you really have to really like that sound of Roy Thomas Baker, that producer, uh, who worked with Queen throughout the 70s and has a thick sound. Luckily, uh, from my point of view, it's a dry sound. It's very tight, and this record really showcases that well. I, I, in the last several weeks, I've been listening to a lot of Jefferson Airplane and harking back, what, 10 years older? This is 78. In 67, Realistic Pillow was drenched, almost way over uh, the top drenched in reverb. And it's refreshing to have kind of a rock album that's thick, tight, a lot of cool bass in it, not overly... Uh, uh, mastered bass, but it's got a really nice balance. I did find I had to turn this up, God, in six to eight notches higher than uh, equivalent records I have, but that's not a bad thing. In fact, that's a good thing. So there's a good dynamics in it. The production of Roy Thomas Baker, who had worked with Queen throughout the 70s, a bunch of artists. I think I first uh, knew his name of a record I had from, I think it's 1970, Freeze, third record, Fire, and... Uh, Fire and Water, which is a great record all right now, sort of their breakout hit. Uh, and it's, you know, rock and roll anthem type of song, uh, very hook based. And he really worked with uh, uh, the cars on this to get that same kind of sound. Obviously the, uh, the free record is not as thick as this. It doesn't have all the layers like a Queen record or this record especially, or especially Queen records that are just they're full of layers of vocals, but they have the wonderful layers of vocals, obviously more electronics on here, because remember Queen, no synths, no synths. Uh, that was Brian May doing all that uh, with his guitar work. But obviously there's synths all over this record. Now, in terms of the cover, you got your uh, wonderful glossy jacket. Is that needed? I don't know, I don't really care. Do we need the gatefold? I don't really care, but it is lovely. Um, I have not read, uh, this, I just wanted to listen straight through without being sidetracked by reading all, of course, from the master tapes and a lovely uh, uh, interview here with Elliot Easton on the recording of this album. But uh, it, is, it, it is a groundbreaking album, and it was a groundbreaking album. It is a record of its time. Uh, you know, to say something's dated, I, you know, it's not fair. I mean, you could, 60s, 70s, 80s, Every uh, decade has uh, their sound. But I think Rhino uh, did this really wonderfully, really successful. Now, having said that, I've been a fan of Rhino from the get-go. You know, they were eventually bought by Warners, by Wea, and became the reissue arm, uh, like Legacy is, uh, to Columbia. But, um, and they've done some wonderful things. Obviously in the CD era, I was really enamored with their packages, their box sets, uh, the, the curating of uh, 
producers like um, Andrew Sandoval, who I just adore uh, how he's put things together for Rhino over the years. I think this is really successful. Uh, is it worth $40? That's for you to decide. I think it is. I think it should be available in stores if possible. I think more people uh, should be able to get it. 5,000 seems to be a sweet spot right now. It gets people probably ordering it instead of putting it off. Uh, kind of like record store day in a way where things are limited and of course people buy it right now. But I've been a big fan of Rhino's Rocktober, their Summer of Love series. And I mentioned this in another video. Uh, their Summer of Love series in 2017, that did 50th anniversary, like Bo Bromel's Triangle. Uh, I think they did Love Forever Changes. Those have also have tipped on jackets. They're not gatefold. They don't add anything. They don't have obies. Um, but they're really good. I believe Kevin Gray did some of those. Uh, and they sound great. And they're a good value. Of course, you know, we're going back seven years, six, seven, six years. But um, those were under, you know, sub $25. Now, of course, you know, we're seven years later, costs are more expensive. But remember, they're not wholesaling this either. They're getting this directly. So, you know, I'm not against that $40 price tag, but Rhino's already been doing really good all analog recordings. I believe some of the Van Morrison things uh, that Kevin Gray did and Joni Mitchell. And uh, I think um, they're a great reissue label already. And doing this with the vast catalog that Warner Music has uh, to do basically four rock records a year and four jazz records a year. I, you know, maybe this is just a start, hopefully. I hope they do it on a regular basis now. A lot of people don't want to spend, you know, anywhere near this kind of money on a new reissue. You can get a great uh, original for a lot less than that. Although for a good clean original, you're going to pay probably, unless you're lucky, probably 25 bucks now. So uh, I'm not averse to the pricing on this. Now, again, I don't do a comparison. I remember what that sounds like. I remember it being a crankable record. I'd say there's this is a fuller version of that. I noticed I was listening to more separate things within this, and maybe because I have a better system, uh, revealing system, than I did uh, later. Again, I'm in a live, liver room. But it all depends on your room, your ears, your speakers, your cartridge, your table, your rig. You know, I recall about a year ago, Rhino put out an amazing reissue of the uh, Little Feats Waiting for Columbus album, which is fantastic. That record uh, is one of the all-time greatest live albums ever. I got a copy of that. I have an original uh, when it came out that came out in my record days working in retail that I still have that is great. And I do have the first version MoFi put out in the late 70s, I believe. They did another version later. Now, I didn't buy those out of the get-go when my friend, uh, my late friend Coleman passed away. He had both MoFi versions, the first one and the second one. The second one's not very good at all. The first one is wonderful, it's wonderful. I did a shootout on that. I'll put a link uh, after this to that shootout. And I found them very close, but I actually like the MoFi the best of the three, but not by a large uh, margin. And uh, the irony of that, it's, it's what we hear in our room again, like I said before, our system or rigs, all that kind of chazerai that I already told you about. But I got a shout response from another uh, YouTuber who happens to have a system probably, what, 20 times uh, the value of mine in Europe. And he said, Mazzy, you're wrong. <laughs> you're wrong. The new version is better than the MoFi. Now that's a subjective thing. For anyone to tell me, or me to tell anyone that they're wrong, that it's really crappy, it makes no sense. For my ears and my situation, in the mood I was in then, I preferred that MoFi slightly better. Uh, than the original and uh, the recent uh, Rhino. But that Rhino is wonderful. And the CD box they curated with the expanded live tracks is really good. So I am a big fan of Rhino Records and I wish them luck with this, uh, almost said Wino there, boy, is that a Freudian or what? Uh, I'm a really big fan of uh, this label and I hope uh, they do some interesting things. More rock and roll is needed and not the same old uh, releases. I think 
Uh, hopefully uh, this will be a success to them and maybe they'll expand it and do it on a monthly or bi-monthly uh, rotation and do some some of the rock records. You know, I'm even not a huge Black Sabbath fan, but that's a label, but that's an artist that really needs a good reissue. I know they've been doing those, of course, Led Zeppelin, you know. We need to do some really interesting records, not the same old uh, records that all these other reissue companies are putting out over and over and over again. And I have those records. I'm over with buying repeated uh, copies of the same thing to do sh just for the sake of doing shootouts. If I want to hear the music, I want to hear the fucking music. It's the music, stupid. But uh, I recommend this. If you don't have a copy, I would say if you have an original, again, I don't AB them. The original is an amazing sounding record. It's just different, I think. Um, so... The Cars, Rhino, High Fidelity. Thanks for watching. That's my take on it. Put your comments below. I'll put links below um, to everything that I discussed, whatever I discussed. Thank you for watching. Mazzy loves you.